In this episode of Restore It, I'm going to show you around this 1983 Mercedes-Benz W123 that I'll be working on along with some help from a few specialists. The owner of this Merc has kept it in fairly good condition considering the age, but he's looking to have a few serious and non-serious problems fixed, along with a full respray and some of the trim re-chromed. Parts for these cars are now incredibly hard to come by, so it's a case of restoring as much as possible and making things from scratch if needs be. Luckily, the interior is in really good condition, with only a few marks on the passenger seat standing out at first. The dash is crack and mark free, with no fading or warping, it's pretty much perfect, along with the clocks, controls and centre console. The door cards almost look brand new, and that includes the chrome that's attached to them. A quick polish, even by hand, would make this piece pretty much perfect, which is nice to see. There are one or two pieces that might need replacing, like this passenger seat part, that snapped and is showing its age. It might be possible to plastic weld this part back together and find a matching paint, but we'll cross that bridge once we get there. One thing I did notice is that the glove box is sitting lower than it should be. It should be flush with the rest of the dash, so that's something we'll have a look at. It might just need adjusting, or worst case, a new part. But other than what I've just mentioned, everything else is pretty much perfect. The headliner is in great condition, the back seats are in great condition, the parcel shelf, the steering wheel, all in really good condition. Even the footwells have been well looked after, and we'll need a vacuum under the mat at most. Now let's take a close look at the exterior of this manganese brown W123. From a distance, it looks quite clean and tidy, but once you're close, you can see that the chrome isn't without issue and the paint isn't what it once was, which is why instead of repairing small areas, the owner has opted for a full respray. As you can just about see, the chrome isn't in great condition. It's dirty, yes, but underneath that, it's riddled with imperfections that really bring down the rest of the car. Like here on the front grille, once polished with a clean rag for about 10 seconds, it comes up much nicer, but reveals some unmissable chips and scratches. So the plan is to remove most of this trim, including this grille, and have it professionally re-chromed after making sure all of the rust and imperfections are gone. It makes sense to do these repairs, as around the chrome in a few places we can see rust spots that have formed and are starting to spread underneath and around the trim. So now is a great time to sort this out, before things get too bad. As for these very good looking rear lights, other than the chrome piece at the bottom of them, they're in almost perfect condition. I think a quick polish is all they'll need to match the rest of the car once it's done. Similar to the front windscreen, we find a spot of rust on the boot lid that's starting to spread upwards, and most likely downwards underneath the trim. As we're at the back of the car, let's take a look at the rear window screen trim piece. Being at the back, it's obviously not subjected to as much as the front and side pieces. The window screen itself is in immaculate condition, so I think this is an example of some of the trim that will be polished on the car. Compare that to a piece above the driver's door, it's a night and day difference. This is probably the worst piece on the car, just full of scratches and chips. Really not a good look on a chrome car, which is why this is a priority. Opening up the bonnet and having a look underneath, we find a 2.8 litre straight six engine that produces 182 brake horsepower at 5,800 RPM, which feeds the rear wheels via a four speed automatic gearbox. I'm pretty sure that exhaust manifold is painted which is kind of weird, but one way of hiding the rust, I guess. We'll get that removed along with the rust and have it looking more like the day it came out of the factory. The engine and gearbox are coming out to be deep cleaned and to make way for the engine bay clean and repaint. The rocker cover and a few other parts are going to be stripped back and returned to factory condition. Another reason to remove the engine is to address a mystery oil leak coming from somewhere near the top, which then makes its way down to the sump and onto the road, which is never good. That front grille is really doing its job as this radiator is in really good condition. I think it will be worth straightening out the few fins that are bent and giving it a good clean instead of buying a new one. The lights are uncracked but maybe a little bit on the foggy side. A quick wet sand and polish should bring them right up. With small 14 inch alloys protected by these huge 70 profile tyres, the wheels are in perfect condition once clean. And just to let you know, the white wall tyre wasn't something Mercedes offered, this has been done by the current owner. The huge 500 litre boot is again in immaculate condition, with only a quick vacuum needed. So now we've seen the inside and the outside up close, let's take a look underneath where the real work is needed. And while I'm moving it onto the ramp, I'll show you a cold start and a slightly warm start, so we can take a listen to the engine, as I think I can hear an exhaust or vacuum leak towards the front of the car.
At first glance, everything seems to be in pretty good condition, with only a bit of surface rust covering most of the components, and signs of that oil leak around the sump and front subframe. The plan for the underside is to completely dry ice blast it, and replace any bad rubber parts I find along the way. I can already see one or two split boots in the front axle that will need replacing, as well as some exhaust hangers that are on their last legs. But overall, I'm surprised by how clean and tidy the underside is, of what is nearly a 40 year old car. Nothing is super rusty or falling apart, most of the rubbers look to be in good condition, and nothing really stands out as a major major issue. Just minor things that you would normally do anyway. The one thing that certainly needs addressing is that oil leak, as it makes it impossible to tell if other things are leaking or just covered in oil. There also seems to be a couple of leaks in the differential, this wasn't in the plan, but if the owner wants it done, I'll remove it, take it apart and see what it needs. One of the main reasons this car is here for repairs is the four corners of the chassis. I'm sure some of you can already see where this is going, and could tell me what that white circle is. It's a small area that I poked with a screwdriver to see how bad the problem was. It's expanding foam. This entire corner is made from foam, filler and black paint. I think this was done to get it through an MOT, and I guess it worked, but it will only get worse and cause more issues down the line. You can see that there is some metal there, but it's very rusty and can be easily removed with a small screwdriver. The same goes for the rear right at the bottom of the wheel arch. You can hear when it stops being metal and becomes filler and foam. And once you get past the first slightly strong layer, it's packed with expanding foam, all of which is going to be removed and replaced with new metal. So there's quite a lot of work to look forward to there, a good amount of bodywork, with bits like this, and a few larger dents that we'll get to during the series, as well as the full respray and re-chroming of the trim. Quite early on in the series we'll find out just how easy or difficult it is to remove this chrome trim, because like I said it needs to be professionally replated by a company that will probably have a waiting list, so it's good to get it off, measured and booked in as soon as possible. There are one or two other spots that need attention like here on the front balance. A seam has started to rust and has spread to both pieces of metal. I found it quite funny that on the front left of the chassis, once I had poked around a little bit I found some fresh, still not hardened sealant, the type you'd find in a bathroom or kitchen. It would seem as if whoever did this opted for less expanding foam on this side, so even the half job was half done. This is the definition of a bodge job, so it will be nice to put right what was done wrong. Before I start removing parts, making lists and sorting nuts and bolts, I'm going to give the car a good clean, top to bottom so I can have a better look at everything including the chrome, the paint and the underside so I'll have a better idea about what needs replacing or what can be restored and what areas need more attention. It's also never fun to work on a dirty car. But before we do that, I want to quickly thank Ridge for sponsoring this episode and tell you about the wallet I've been using for over a year now. If you're in the market for a slim, RFID blocking minimal front pocket wallet, Ridge might just be the one for you. The Ridge wallet has more than 36,000 5 star reviews and even more happy customers, including myself. I've been using my forged carbon one for over a year now without any issues. It still looks like it did the day I got it. With two metal blades bound together by a durable elastic band, the Ridge really doesn't look like your traditional wallet. They're available in a variety of materials including aluminium, titanium, carbon fiber, Damascus steel and 18 karat gold, with the choice of a money clip or strap. So if you're tired of your old wallet, check out the Ridge today by going to my link at the top of the description and use code RESTORE at checkout for 10% off your entire order, which will come with a lifetime guarantee and free worldwide shipping. Thanks to Ridge, let's get back to it. It wasn't that dirty on top, so a quick foam gun and jet wash removed the thin layer that was there. As for the wheel arches and underneath, I spent quite a bit of time making sure all of the mud was gone from the bits I could get to with the pressure washer.
Once I had let the soap do its job for a bit, I rinsed it down and applied some wheel cleaner to remove the little brake dust that had built up. The car was now much cleaner underneath and ready to be worked on. And that's about it for this episode. Next time we'll start stripping bits off, including the trim, bumpers, front fender and maybe even the engine and gearbox. Let me know in the comments what you think about having a different car on the channel, and join me next episode for either a workshop update, the 316i Touring, or the W123. All of the new panels for the 325i Sport are about to be on their way to Spain, so progress on that will be on your screen soon. Thanks for making it this far, and thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.